And welcome to Player One Memories episode number 5. This series is a nostalgic look back to the classic era of arcade gaming. Today we jump back to 1985, where a 10 year old me got to experience some all time classic arcade releases like Green Beret, Hang On, Ya Kung Fu and Commando and ended up buying all those games for my Commodore 64. The John Hughes classic movie The Breakfast Club was released which taught me the most useful phrase when speaking to a teacher. Eat my shorts. The Chinese government in their infinite wisdom decided to ban the movie Back to the Future because of its use of time travel was seen as a disrespectful portrayal of history. I kid you not, that actually happened. And my favorite song of 1985 was AHA's Take On Me, which is not only a rocking song, but a super cool music video as well. But now let's jump on over to today's game, which is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, released by Atari in the arcade. I remember first playing this game at a really dodgy beachfront arcade in Durban, South Africa. The weird thing is, I didn't actually see the game, but heard it from across a few rows of arcade machines. I was jamming out to Green Beret when I heard the indie theme music and beelined it over there immediately. It was amongst the first set of Atari arcades to use their new System 1 arcade board and shared company with the likes of Marble Madness, Road Blasters, Roadrunner and a few other Atari gems. It was also the first one to have real speech samples and sampled John Williams music from the movie. Atari themselves were already veterans of the Lucasfilm conversion process, having made the complete original Star Wars trilogy for arcades. Temple of Doom though was going to require a completely different style. The movie was a swashbuckling seat of your pants roller coaster ride of action which is actually where the initial idea for the game came from. Laserdisc arcades were all the rage at that time and the team's first idea was to make it a Laserdisc game and focus solely on the minecart sequence from the movie but they came to the conclusion it was just going to be way too expensive to film it so they switched it over to the new Atari System 1 board. Peter Lipson who worked worked on classics like Blasteroids and Ramparts headed up the project and he said we had the script and we saw some of the film as it was in progress. It was obvious we needed to build the game around the whip. We wanted to include the minecarts too and thus the game was born. Just like the movie you have to rescue the captured kids who have been imprisoned in the mines by the thuggy cult and forced to look for the remaining Shankara stones. The game has four distinct levels all set pieces from the third act of the movie. We got the rescue the kids sequence the minecart chase, stealing the Shankara stones, and finally the showdown with Molaram on the rope bridge. Molaram, prepare to meet Kali in hell. The flow of the game is you repeat the first three levels three times. Then on the fourth go, the Shankara level is replaced with the rope bridge for the climactic ending. One of my favorite aspects is the choice at the beginning of the game's difficulty. Arcade games just generally didn't do this as they wanted you to die as much as possible to pump in more credits. But not only was it a cool addition, but each level of difficulty just added more detail and aspects to the game, so it actually rewarded you for getting better. I thought this was a cool idea, especially for an arcade game. The game, just like the movie, is fast paced, and you gotta keep moving or you'll die. Each level plays a bit differently which keeps the gameplay interesting. I always thought the graphics are really top notch and has that high res system 1 look that still looks very impressive even now and of course the sound which really made this stand out from other arcades at the time with its abundance of speech samples and that pumping John William music just got you in the mood for adventure. And here's what Peter Lipson had to say about the end results. We were pretty happy with it. It might have been nice to include the plane crash as a skiing game for example but we had very tight constraints since the whole game had to fit on EEPROMs and they weren't cheap. I thought we captured the spirit of the movie quite well and I agree. 
Overall, the game keeps that Foss pace hanging on for your laugh feeling the third act of the movie is known for, and they did a really good job with it, and is a classic old arcade game that's well worth having a go at. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.